Hello everyone. Welcome to our Skudar University TV channel. I am Asil Özdoğru, an associate professor in the Department of Psychology. Today, I will be talking to you about psychology of distance education. This talk is a part of a series in our course in university culture. Let's start. Let's start with education. Education takes an important place in our lives. We spent at least 12 years of our lives in compulsory education. After that, we may move into universities. And when you add those together, it can take a quarter of our lives spent in formal educational institutions. Every day, we spend a certain amount of our time in education-related activities. So education is quite important for all of us. The current education systems and programs that we have have been evolving in the past couple centuries. Technology, innovation and diffusion have changed not only our personal and business life, but also uh, our educational lives. Education systems have uh, more and more uh, responded to the changes in technology and adopted and integrated more of these new technologies. Um, for example, in 2005, there were only 1 billion uh, internet users in the world. That number rose up to 3.5 billion in 2016 and today as of 2019 we have 4.5 4, uh, 4 billion internet users in the world. When you think of the world population as 7.8 billion almost 60 percent of the world population is among the internet users. With this increasing rate of technology use and uh, the use of internet in our lives, education systems have also changed and we become uh, more immersed in these uh, web-based technologies. So the traditional face-to-face -face education have slowly and sometimes like in this situation very quickly adopted these new technologies. These technologies allowed us to have distance education in uh, new ways because in the past, when distance education first uh, came out, it was mostly done through print-based technologies. Textbooks were sent to students, they would study the uh, books and they would send back the exams and so on and so forth. Then uh, with the radio and other uh, audio-based technologies, we had more and more uh, those sorts of things being used in distance education activities. Then with the television uh, being used in the delivery of uh, distance education, which is what we are doing at this very moment. Uh, multimedia based distance education activities, um, they included uh, CDs and uh, those kinds of uh, computer technology is being used in uh, the educational activities and more recently uh, we have been using web-based distance education technologies uh, which includes these online learning platforms and uh, environments. Um, distance learning is a larger term that covers e-learning which is also called online learning and that also covers uh, mobile learning that is shown here with M learning and uh, diff different configurations of distance education can be set up by using these different uh, mediums and different technologies. When we look into um, online learning and use of online technologies in education we see uh, this kind of a uh, continuum. It can range uh, from fully face-to-face -face education to fully 
online education. And in between, we might have uh, online technologies being used as classroom eight, or uh, flipped learning or hybrid learning, which uses both online and face-to-face -face, uh, components in the delivery of instruction. And uh, this semester, uh, we have started with a fully face-to-face -face education, but now we are doing a fully face-to-face -face, uh, education. I'm sorry, we are now doing a fully online uh, education. So when you uh, look at it that way, it looks like a, a blended or a hybrid uh, learning, uh, but uh, obviously this is not the regular and educationally uh, um, more appropriate and well-designed uh, situation because of the uh, unexpected situation with the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, what we uh, were forced to move with this pandemic uh, was the use of existing um, online technologies in the uh, in our educational activities and uh, for that reason it is not uh, what would have been if this was designed uh, more of a hybrid or blended form of learning in the beginning. For that reason educational technologists uh, they uh, refer to what's going on in uh, many educational institutions today in the world as uh, emergency remote teaching because this is an uh, emergency situation and we need to find uh, quick solutions and online learning technologies and environments uh, were quite helpful in helping us to uh, come over this emergency. Um, online learning and uh, distance learning in general is not quite the same as face-to-face -face learning. It has its own uh, characteristics. Uh, the relationship between uh, student, teacher, and content is mediated by the environment in distance learning processes. This environment can be uh, anything that we have seen before in terms of uh, radio, television, internet, or uh, online learning platforms those have uh, a shaping influence on uh, the distance learning processes. So uh, here, student is not only interacting with the teacher, but also interacting with the environment. Uh, and environment is also, again, interacting with the teacher and, and the content and all of these components are uh, influencing one another. So here we have a more dynamic environment uh, and set of um, relationships. One thing that um, educational researchers have shown to us is that uh, the educational experience, either in face-to-face uh, -face or uh, more importantly in online learning contexts is shaped by these three elements which are cognitive presence, social presence and teaching presence. For students or for teachers experiencing this educational activity, educational environment is not only dependent their own cognitive processes and how they uh, think about or how they feel about the uh, learning process, but also to what extent they uh, have a social presence. W teachers and students, to what extent they feel present and they feel each other uh, available and accessible in these learning environments. In the same way, to what extent teacher is uh, accessible and reachable, and to what extent teacher is present in the equation, also uh, shapes uh, the learning uh, environment. The, the thing that should take place in uh, 
for a well-rounded educational experience is that uh, there should be uh, high levels of these three components. Cognitive presence, social presence, and teaching presence, presence uh, should be taking place at higher levels so that uh, everyone experiences a, a fully formed and enriching educational experience. If we look at uh, online learning more closely, online learning uh, is obviously uh, different than other forms of uh, distance education uh, activities and processes. And uh, we have now many years of experience in online learning through, through the world. And uh, online learning uh, is well studied and detailed by many researchers and scholars. And there are certain things that we know about online learning, such as online learning is usually easier than classroom learning. Uh, because you have everything uh, online, you can access everything online, and it can be quite uh, helpful for you, and it can give you an easier uh, round of study. Students can be anonymous in online courses. Um, you don't need to show your face. You don't need to uh, reveal your uh, true identity. And uh, even uh, you can uh, do things behind the screen that uh, your teacher or other people will not know. Students can delay their study to another time, so you don't have to do it uh, right now at this moment. For example, this uh, live session will be recorded, so uh, you can watch it later uh, on your own and you can postpone your uh, activities. Uh, and you can wait, for example, till the end of the week and log on at the end of the week to the online learning uh, platform and do all your work at one sitting. Uh, if you have a broken device or uh, not working connection, uh, you can submit the homework late. Uh, that will be accepted uh, to a certain extent. And um, you can, uh, one of the uh, disadvantages uh, is reported to be uh, students would be missing out on student resources that are available in the campuses. However, I should note that these are actually incorrect. These are myths. These are misconceptions. These are some ideas that especially students have uh, in their mind about online learning, which is not correct. It is not easier than classroom learning. Students cannot be anonymous because everything is recorded in those environments. Um, it is not a good idea to delay your work uh, because activities are, again, can be time sensitive. Uh, it's again not a good idea to cram it in all one session uh, because you need uh, periodic sessions to keep your studies going. Uh, you cannot always uh, produce an excuse for your devices and connection and uh, just submit your everything late. Um, there is obviously a certain level of tolerance, but uh, when you do it all the time, it can be uh, problematic. And uh, students uh, don't necessarily miss out uh, student resources because uh, universities are also adapting to these uh, online uh, reality and providing services online in terms of counseling centers, uh, career centers, and uh, those sorts of services. So if you had anything in mind uh, similar to these ideas, uh, it is a good idea uh, to change them because they are not uh, correct and they don't help uh, your studies. So um, let's look into some of the essential and uh, necessary characteristics of distance learners and online learners. 
what you need to have to be uh, successful in online classes, online learning environments. Uh, the list can be just stated with only self-regulation. If you need only one thing to be, uh, if you if you need only one thing uh, to be successful in uh, online learning, or even face-to-face -face learning, that would be self-regulation. We will talk about that. We will expand that further, uh, but. Um, as you may know, it is like uh, controlling and monitoring your own uh, behaviors. Other things uh, that I will talk about today will include motivation, goal setting, study skills, time management, and resources. These are also uh, essential in the success of students in online classes and online learning environment and also, again, for face-to-face -face learning and face-to-face -face, uh, education. And uh, my first-year students would, uh, some of them would be familiar with these concepts because uh, these were the things that we talked about in our academic coaching uh, sessions uh, the year before. So, self-regulation. Like I said, it is our ability to control and uh, uh, manage our thoughts, our uh, emotions, our uh, behaviors. Uh, and uh, self-regulated learners are more successful in uh, their uh, education. What do we need to do to be more self-regulating? We need to plan, set goals, and also define some strategies for our studies. Then we need to use those strategies and we should uh, monitor our performance, uh, whether we are going in the way that we want to go. And also, after that, we would be reflecting our, on our performance. So it, is, it involves also uh, checking yourself, testing yourself, and uh, reflecting, thinking about your own performance and uh, identifying weaknesses and shortcomings so that you can take necessary actions to uh, change those existing strategies and uh, improve your performance. And this is a cycle. Uh, you repeat the cycle every time uh, when you go into an educational activity or a course or a semester. Uh, so that you uh, continually improve your uh, educational outcomes and performance. So uh, it is uh, our awareness of our uh, thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and uh, changing them in the good way to help improve our performance. Online learners, distance learners, and learners in general should have uh, self-regulation and also motivation. Motivation is a key concept in learning. And my students would remember my favorite quote that I usually repeat in um, nearly all of my courses. Uh, it says, if you want to learn, no one can stop you. If you don't want to learn, no one can help you. So for us to learn, we need to have that desire to learn. And that is our motivation. Then how can we be more motivated? How can we make ourselves be more motivated? Uh, we first maybe realize what we need in this life. Because uh, as you know, according to Maslow's, hierarchy of needs. Uh, we have basic physiological needs for food and for sleep kinds of things. Then uh, we need to feel safe and secure. Then we need to feel uh, loud and belonging to a, a group. We need to uh, satisfy our self-esteem needs. And at the highest level, we should be self-actualizing uh, our, ourselves. So 
uh, when we think about why I am doing this, why I am studying, why I am learning, uh, we may be uh, we may need to realize what are our needs for doing this uh, education, for doing this activity. And uh, motivation can come from intrinsic and extrinsic sources. If you study to be a better person, it sounds more like an intrinsic motivation. Uh, if you study to get high grades, uh, that sounds more like an extrinsic motivation. And as you would realize, uh, studying to be a better person, uh, studying for uh, personal reasons, uh, can give us better outcomes, but extrinsic motivators are not always bad. So depending on the situation, depending on the learner and the context, uh, we may need uh, a mixture of the two uh, so that we can be more engaged in our learning and uh, we can get more out of uh, our studies. If you want more practical tips uh, in terms of how to motivate yourself. Uh, here is a quick short list of to-do activities uh, if you want to uh, motivate yourself, such as starting each day fresh. So uh, I would recommend you to uh, not uh, uh, change your sleep cycle. Uh, continue with your uh, regular sleep cycle and wake up and start each day with a fresh uh, face and fresh uh, mindset. We should accept imperfection. Sometimes we can get low scores. Sometimes we can be unsuccessful. That is fine. That is normal. Uh, we shouldn't judging ourselves very negatively. Uh, we should look at our progress, uh, how far we come since the beginning, uh, that's important. We shouldn't always focus on the end outcome. If there are things that are blocking our uh, motivation and concentration, we can change them. Uh, we can get support from our family, friends, and uh, school resources. Uh, and uh, it says, fake it till you make it, which is like, uh, you set your mind and even uh, sometimes when you don't really believe it, if you just repeat it to yourself, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I can do it, I will be doing it, that can even help you to do it. And uh, in more general, uh, having physical activity and physical exercise is good. And uh, we should always give ourselves credit and we should accept our accomplishments and uh, give ourselves the due credit because we are usually very harsh on ourselves. Goal setting is the another one of those concepts important in online learning and learning in general. And as you've seen in self-regulation, we need to be able to uh, setting those goals uh, and working on them uh, properly so that we can reach those goals by the time uh, we want them to be accomplished. A goal setting process can be uh, something like this. Um, we can start with the end result. Uh, where do we want to see ourselves uh, by the end of this year? I want to be uh, a student, a student with uh, this level of performance. Then. Uh, we can or we should start uh, drafting some goals and create some SMART goals. Uh, I'll show you what those SMART means. Uh, writing those goals down uh, step by step, creating an action plan to accomplish those goals, uh, creating a timeline when by when we will accomplish each step, taking action for every uh, step of the way, and re-evaluating and assessing uh, whether we uh, accomplished those goals and targets is part of the goal setting process. So um, setting SMART goals. SMART is actually an acronym. 
an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So our goals that we set for ourselves should be smart in that sense that they should be specific. I want to be a good student. That's not specific enough. What do we mean by good? Uh, do we have a certain uh, uh, GPA in mind? Do we have uh, a certain program in our mind? Do we have a, a comparison in our mind or comparison with ourselves or with other people? So we need to be more specific and it, it should be measurable. Uh, how will you know when you have reached it? So uh, if you have specific targets, uh, measurable uh, targets in your goals, uh, that's better. It can be a number, it can be a feeling, or uh, it can be something that you can measure and you can say that, yes, I now reached that goal. Those goals should be also achievable. If you set a goal for yourself that is too high, uh, you may not be able to achieve that goal. So you should know yourself and set goals that you can actually achieve. Goals should be also realistic. Uh, can you realistically achieve it? And these are more external factors. Can you realistically do it this semester? Is one semester uh, enough time frame or do you have the enough resources realistically to achieve this goal? And as we said before, uh, goals should be timely and we should be uh, setting uh, appropriate time limit on ourselves and we should be uh, going through that time frame uh, step by step and achieve those goals. So uh, you can look this up online and find some examples of uh, smart goals for students. Um, but obviously you need to personalize it. Uh, you need to know about your own resources, uh, uh, sources, uh, uh, plans, uh, and uh, your uh, reality that you live in so that you can shape those goals for your personal uh, uh, strategies. Study skills is another one of those uh, issues that both online learners and face-to-face -face learners uh, need to uh, work on because studying effectively requires some knowledge and skills. Uh, just sitting down and reading something is not enough to learn and study those materials. And edu again, educational psychologists have uh, done uh, many research on this and we know uh, what it takes to study effectively. For example, one thing that we know is that uh, when you sit down and read something, uh, you need to actually do it in a, a multi-step process. Before you read your textbook, before you start to study your materials, you should have a preview of those materials. You should uh, look into the contents quickly, you should look into the keywords quickly uh, and have a, a preview of the material that you are going to study. In the second step, you need to question yourself based on what you've seen in that preview, based on uh, what appeared in that quick look, uh, ask questions to yourself. Uh, I've seen this in the table of contents, uh, what could that be? I see in this concept, uh, I remember it seeing somewhere else before. Uh, w so uh, asking questions about those ideas coming the preview is the second step, followed by the actual reading that we usually do. So uh, before sitting down and reading our material, uh, we should be doing a preview, questioning, then reading. So. In the third step, we sit down and read our materials. After that, we reflect on uh, our reading. Reflecting is, as you know, 
uh, as the light reflects on a surface. Reflection is when we bounce ideas about uh, what, we, uh, what we read. Uh, again, um, uh, using mental imagery or uh, drawing things on paper uh, or creating mind uh, concept maps. Uh, these kinds of ideas, these kinds of practices allow us to make that material that we read more personal. After that, uh, we are uh, expected to do a recite. Uh, in recite section or in, in recite step, uh, we should be uh, talking about those ideas and those new knowledge that is uh, uh, coming out of our studies. And uh, we can talk to ourselves, we can talk to our parents and friends, and we can uh, make these uh, new knowledge more action actionable and more real by uh, talking about them. And in the last stage, uh, we should do a review, a review of our studies, and we can uh, test ourselves, we can uh, get into uh, some uh, assessment activities uh, so that we can um, uh, review all the work and we can uh, find our weaknesses and go back and change them and improve on them. If uh, you want other strategies or other skills to be a more effective uh, student, uh, these are also uh, general study skills that are shown to be effective, such as self-testing. Uh, sometimes we just sit down and read and read, but we don't test really, we don't really test ourselves. Uh, solving quizzes in our textbooks, uh, going online, finding some tests uh, or exams or activities to uh, test our understanding is essential and needed in effective study. Uh, and uh, we should not, like in those myths, sit down and study all in one session. We should be uh, distributing that practice a uh, couple times a week. Uh, or every day a short amount of time. Uh, when we study, we should engage in elaborative interrogation, which means uh, asking many questions uh, repeatedly and even some silly questions, uh, like a four-year-old child would ask. So interrogating yourself, interrogating the content that you want to learn is also needed in effective study skills. Self-explanation, how do I know? Uh, try to explain yourself as we have seen in the reflection uh, step in those PQ4R method. And in, uh, as another strategy, uh, when we have uh, distributed practice sessions, we should uh, interleave those sessions. So what we studied uh, in the last session, should not study there, should not stay there, and we should combine it with the current session and uh, uh, view them as if, as if uh, we view uh, a dress or a, a, a knot. Another important skill or another important uh, characteristics, another important characteristic of effective learners, again, both online and face-to-face, uh, -face, is time management. Especially in this time of pandemic, uh, we have lots of time on our hands, and if we don't plan that time, if we don't use that time uh, effectively, that time can be maybe uh, misused. Time management is a skill that we need to also pay attention and improve ourselves uh, so that uh, we might be uh, making most of our time, which is a very precious uh, resource. Um, you may come across this kind of a, a matrix, priority matrix, and um, you can try to apply it to your life. Uh, 
the, the tasks that you have at hand, uh, are they high, do they have high urgency or low urgency? Uh, your teacher gave you a homework which is due tomorrow, uh, which is like a short something and you need to do it very quickly, that can have a high urgency. Versus you have a term paper that you need to submit at the end of the semester, which, ha which you have four more weeks, that could be uh, on lower urgency, because this one is coming more closely. Is it important or uh, not so important? High importance, uh, low importance. So the idea is simple. If something has high, imp high importance and it has high urgency, you need to do it first, because it cannot wait. If something is important, but have low urgency, you can do it next. You can wait on it a little while, and you can do it in, uh, in the later. High urgency, uh, low importance, uh, you can do it later, uh, if it is still necessary. So, because of it is low importance, it may not be even necessary, but you may want to do it uh, if you have time after going through uh, more important and urgent uh, issues. If something has low urgency and low importance, maybe you should not even think about uh, doing it. Uh, you can just cross it out of your list. And you can think of uh, personal examples from your lives. Uh, playing a video game, uh, going uh, online shopping, uh, or uh, having a study session, exercising, uh, talking to your grandparents. Uh, so you can think about all of them, those tasks, education related or not, and you can have this kind of a, uh, urgency and uh, importance matrix and uh, think about what to do at this time and later. Um, time management skills include uh, prioritizing, scheduling, keeping a to-do list, resting and delegation. Uh, so um, if you want to be on top of your time management, you should have a, a priority list, as we see in here those things that are urgent should be prioritized. They should be higher on the list. You should have a keeping, you should have a to-do list. Uh, what I should be doing today, what I should be doing by next week, what should I be doing by uh, next month. Schedule your time. Um, in face-to-face -face, uh, learning, you have your classes set uh, on designated times and days. But uh, when you are on your own in online learning, you need to schedule yourself and be more responsible with your schedule. Uh, again, um, uh, disrupting your sleep cycle is not a good idea. You should have enough rest uh, so that you can have a fresh mind and keep working on your studies. And also, if there are group activities that you are in, if there are certain tasks that you can delegate to other people, you should also uh, use those other people as resources. And again, uh, there are many other sources like these that gives us ideas about uh, how to manage our time. And uh, the more we use these, uh, the better we manage our times. And uh, those effective time managers are also uh, effective students and learners. Lastly, uh, I will talk about some resources. Uh, it looks as if we are alone in this business by ourselves. Uh, we are studying on our own and we need to learn everything by our own, uh, but uh, that feeling is somewhat misleading. As much as we are responsible and uh, we are the first person uh, engaging in these activities, we have other people uh, that we seek, that we can seek resource, such as our professors. Uh, we are 
teaching you several courses. We have uh, knowledge, expertise, and skills in helping you out with uh, uh, your needs. So you can reach out to your professors and ask questions and be more participating in the classes uh, so that you can make uh, most of your learning. Your classmates, uh, they are always full of ideas, full of knowledge, full of uh, creative uh, things. So uh, connect, uh, communicate with your classmates even in these online environments. Uh, because now we need it more. As you've seen in the community of inquiry model, uh, social presence, that feeling of social connectedness is even more valuable in online learning. So your classmates are uh, now more important. Connect to them and uh, establish clear and uh, uh, effective communication channels. Uh, because if your communication is not clear and effective, you may have also miscommunication and that can also give you uh, lots of misinformation. Uh, your library is open, your library staff, your other school staff is available. You can reach out to them, you can connect with them and ask for resources, articles, books, uh, educational uh, materials, uh, so connect with them. Your academic advisors, as always, there to help you with academic decisions, uh, which classes to take, which programs to enroll, uh, masters, uh, higher level studies, uh, so you can consult them about those academic uh, matters. Like I said, our university is, uh, and all the universities are operating, uh, even in this distance education uh, mode, and uh, you can seek resources from our uh, health, culture, and sports uh, directories. Uh, you can find ways of uh, engaging in healthy cultural and sportive activities even uh, in your homes. Counseling centers, career centers, those are also uh, available and they can give you uh, services at a distance. Uh, administrators in schools and uh, other institutions can be also helpful in some uh, bigger problems that you need to deal with. And again, your family, friends and relatives can be helpful in uh, solving some of your problems. Uh, we need to seek out uh, those people and those resources to uh, overcome our problems and uh, solve our uh, problems. Uh, and as you see in this uh, wheel of well-being, uh, for us to feel well, uh, for us to feel uh, uh, psychologically functioning, functioning uh, we should pay attention and improve all our uh, areas of functioning. Academic studies, school is just one of the uh, many components of uh, well-being. So we should uh, pay attention to our physical environment, friends and family, romantic significant others, our financial matters, our physical and psychological health, uh, fun and recreation, physical activities and having fun, and uh, doing things to improve our personal growth. These all will uh, give us a better uh, level of well-being, and we need to uh, support all those areas of well-being. So don't think yourself as only a learner or a student. You are a uh, a full person with all of these areas and you need to invest your time and resources to improve your well-being in this uh, time of especially pandemic. Okay, uh, that's pretty much uh, all I had in mind to share with you. As uh, many of you know, I usually finish with this uh, kind of uh, ending uh, because uh, there is always more to whatever we say and whatever we want to learn. And um, on this issue, if you want to have more, you can contact me or you can look up some of my resources uh, and find more about these issues and concepts. Uh, and again, if you want to learn 
uh, no one can stop you and if you don't want to learn no one can help you we should be wanting to learn we should be setting our minds on our goals we should be using our time effectively and we should know about ourselves and uh, regulate our uh, thoughts feelings and behaviors so that we can be the best version of ourselves uh, that's all I got for today uh, thank you for being with me with us today and I hope to see you around uh, take care and bye bye